Get ready, America, for this is the best of Destination Small Town, a Cluck TV production featuring the shows that have taken Sweet Swine County by storm. The reality hit, The Real Housewives of Sweet Swine County, Sweet Swine's favorite music show, Backstage at the Commune, the tastefully done cooking segment, Cooking It Up with Betty, the always zany soap opera, As the Corn Grows, and of course, the wildly popular talk shows that share what's happening inside and outside Sweet Swine County. Which shows will you be seeing today? Stay tuned and find out right after the break. This program has been made possible by Purdue University, Sweet Swine County's Institute of Higher Learning, with three classroom trailers that can accommodate up to nine students each. To learn more, visit SweetSwineScoop.com. Get ready, because now you can watch a full of fun daytime talk show that shares the latest and greatest news about the people, places, and events found all over our story country. The Women of Sweet Swine County, hosted by three sassy ladies that tell small town stories with big town attitude. Now, on this station and the web. What's cooking? A KLUK TV production starring Abby Appetite, Lenny, and Lola Leftover. Their destination, outside Sweet Swine County. Their purpose, to share their discoveries of the best cafes, restaurants, bakeries, supper clubs, and night spots. It all began when they realized food options in Sweet Swine County were limited. Now you can learn what they learned with hundreds of food options. What's cooking in living color on the web? What a mess. I can't make heads or tail of any of this financial information. And I've got 437 employees to pay on Monday. Cousin John, how could you do this to me? Wilma? Yes, Mr. Plow? Are you sure that nobody else in this company can do payroll? I'm sure, Mr. Plow. Oh, and Mr. Perleone is here to see you. You tell him if he's here to get a paycheck that I went back to Siberia. No, no, he said he's here to help. Well, in that case, send him in. So, Mr. Ferlioni, Wilma says you're here to help. In, in a manner of speaking, yes. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm concerned, Mr. Plow. Concerned? Yes, Nosy Normal over at Edie's Cafe has told me that Ronnie P. Silage has been arrested for the attempted murder of J.R. Olson. Yeah, Ronnie Silage. I can't believe that halfwits got him in and shoot Cousin John. But be that as it may, he's in jail right now. So you don't have to stand guard at the hospital no, anymore? No, I'm not. No, not at the hospital. And Norma also informs me that J.R. is still in a coma? Get, get to the point, Mr. Furry whatever. But that is the point, Elmer. With Mr. Olson in a coma, who is going to run his empire? Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's no disaster recovery plan that I can find in this place. Well, I propose that you and I put an action plan together to keep this operation running smoothly. I don't know, but Nosy Norma told me that Prairie Ann told her that Katie said that you built her out of five thousand dollars and put it on a horse at the racetrack what's that all about 
You can't believe what those busybodies say. It was all just a big misunderstanding. It got exaggerated and blown out of proportion. I don't know. What if Cousin John wakes up and finds out that I've shared confidential information about his business with you? What's he going to think about that? Well, if Cousin John wakes up, will you have a job tomorrow, Elmer? What's that supposed to mean? I'm his bodyguard and security guy. And you're his bodyguard the night he got shot. Yeah. And I jumped in front of him to try to save his life and was covered with blood. From what I hear, and I don't take this the wrong way, but from what I hear, it looked like you were jumping for cover. What? That's what everybody's saying. Who? Everybody at the party. Well, they're wrong. I could have been killed trying to protect Cousin John. Put yourself in JR's shoes. Would you feel comfortable knowing that you were protecting you? I don't even know what that means. If JR were to wake up tomorrow, you could be out of a job. You could be in the unemployment line. What you need to do is you need to secure your position within this fine organization. And I am just a guy that can help you do that. Hello. Well, hello to you too, sugar. Annie? Why, darling, you sound surprised to hear my voice. Oh, crap. What? What was that, sugar? Oh. I can hardly hear you. Oh, oh, nothing, darling. Uh, I thought I told you just to call me in case it was an emergency. Oh, but it is an emergency. I miss you, sugar lips. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Annie. You, you can't do this now. You're gonna, you're gonna jinx everything here. I don't see why I can't come out and see you. After all, I am your little old wife. No, no, you don't understand. My brother, my very rich brother, well, he went and got himself shot at his own birthday party. And I'm going to have to act fast if I am going to, how should I say, relieve him of that excess fortune. You, you shot him? No, I did not shoot him. Some local yokel did that. But if you come here, you'll just muck things up. Oh, but sugar. It, it, don't but sugar me. You just stay put there at home and I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Well, you better be or I'll start looking for another man to complicate my life. Oh, come on, Annie. You know I love you. Well, all right. You have one week. Now, that's my girl. Now, listen, after we get this one done, we're going to be set for life. Bye now. Good, send him in. What's up, Elmer? Is Cousin John all right? Well, you know, he's been in a coma for two weeks now. Well, yeah, but he's gonna get better, right? Well, that's what I called you in to talk about. Oh no, it's not bad news, is it? I, I knew that split hoof gravy train wasn't gonna last no, forever. No, 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 Earl, just calm down. Just calm down, everything is gonna be just fine. I just had a couple of questions for you. But Cousin John's more than my boss. He's my best friend. I mean, we grew up together. That's what I thought. So, I would say you know Cousin John better than anyone. Well, I reckon so. I mean, I remember back in high school, his family didn't have two nickels to rub together or a window to throw it out. You know, with his dad losing the farm and everything. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a good question. How did he get all this farmland? That's a mystery to this day. You know, he got on a merchant boat and headed to South America right after graduation. South America? Yeah. He hooked up with a Brazilian fella. Something to do with livestock, import, export, I'm not real sure. But you know, he sent me a really neat postcard one time. I carry it with me all the time. You want to see it? Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah. Then what happened? Well, wouldn't you know it, he showed up about two years later in Sweet Swine County with a hundred thousand dollar bankroll and he bought the old Janssen place there right next to Aunt Ella. Started up farming. So where'd he get the hundred thousand? Well, something to do with a tip that that Brazilian feller gave him. And he built this entire farming empire 
out of $100,000. Oh, he sure did. You know, every time he made a little bit of money, he just turned right around and invested back in another farm or a business or something, you know? Tell me something, Earl, and be honest. Well, that's me, Honest Earl. You've known Cousin John a long time, and you probably know him better than anybody. Well, yes, sir. When Cousin John comes out of this thing, you think I'm going to have my job? Uh-oh, it looks like the unemployment line for Elmer. Will Elmer find himself flipping burgers over at McDougal's drive-in? And will Earl solo on Split Hoof tonight until Cousin John comes out of his coma? Guess we'll find out after the break. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of The Sweet Swine Diaries, a collection of unauthorized biographies by Cassidy Davis, featuring a riveting collection of the exotic, neurotic, chaotic, and even psychotic stories about the lives of the Sweet Swine County ladies. Miss Davis is quoted as saying, I have never seen so many single women with so many problems in my life. Enjoy. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit Destination Small Town. Get ready for a website like no other. A website where you will find stories done by reporters, tourists, and celebrities from Sweet Swine County. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County. With nothing happening in their county, they decided to do some stories about the businesses and points of interest located in their neighboring towns and counties. Take a unique look at life inside the small towns of the Midwest by visiting DestinationSmallTown.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows! Now, we join Aunt Minnie as she and Lawyer Ed meet to discuss a few, uh, legal matters. Oh, Lawyer Ed, thank you so much for agreeing to meet me. You know, I just have to be here when Johnny gets out of his coma. Oh, oh, that, that's, 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 that's no problem. It's just, there's just been an accident down on Highway 29. It's just a, a van full of nuns ran into a hay wagon and, and, um, the ambulance should be pulling up any time right now. I should be down there right now passing out cards. Well, well do you know if anyone was hurt? Ho hopefully, but, but I, I mean, I hope not. Uh, now, now what, what can I do for you, Miss Minnie? I need to know what to do about little John in case, God forbid, John doesn't come out of his coma. Little John? I'm afraid they're going to take little John away from me because Johnny and I aren't married. Oh, have, you, have you spoken with his mother? Oh, no. She's in Europe somewhere. We haven't seen her since she dropped John off on our doorstep about a year ago. Well, that's peculiar. What's peculiar? But she's right here in Sweet Swine County. She she contacted me last week about full custody of little John. She Did she contact you? No. Hmm. That's strange. I told her I represented co cousin John in this matter. John has talked to you about this? Sure has. Sure he has. We had we had a court date set for this week. But now that John's in this condition... So you're, you're telling me Mystic Ray is in town? Yes, yes. John says she's threatening to take little John to Oklahoma. So you're telling me John has discussed this with her? Yes, and he's dead set on retaining custody of the boy. But And I tried to get him to update his will. Oh. I was really surprised to get your call, Ed. Uh, I don't know why Aunt Ella would want me here. Well, she considered you to be a good friend, as she did you, Prairie Ann. I, I still can't believe she's gone. <laughs> oh, I, I can't either. It just, it's, I was so heartbroken. I couldn't attend the services at all. It was, it was, she was my first love. Hey, can we get on with this? I've got a whole truckload of laying hens that's leaving here at one o'clock. Oh, don't be such an old grouch, for heaven's sakes. And I didn't know that you dated on Ella. Yeah, she, we dated in high school. And, and actually, we were engaged to be married. You two got hitched? Giddy up! No, no, we, we weren't hitched, but I had dreams of making in vaudeville and, and was going to get on the entertainment circuit and travel the country. You were in showbiz? Yes, I was, I was in show business and uh, 
But Ella wanted no part of it. I, I wanted to follow the bright lights, but Ella, Ella wanted to stay here in Sweet Swine County and take care of her father's farm. Oh, that's so sad. And yes, it was. It was very sad. But, but she did come to visit me every year. Every year? Every year until 1956. 1956? Yeah, that was the year she just called me. But she never married, did she? Yeah, she said I was a tough act to follow, and, it, and it, it took me 40 years to get over the idea that she would never be my wife. Oh, Ed, that is just so romantic. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's break out the violins and pop the cork on some champagne. Oh, be quiet, you old sourpuss. Listen, woman, and you, let's get on with this. It's about time. Well, this is the reading of the will of, of Aunt Ella and states in here that she would like to start with, with uh, Mrs. Swanson. Mrs. Swanson, Aunt Ella would like to give you all of her recipe books for pies and hot dishes. Oh, oh, how, I can't believe it. Why, Aunt Ella was the best cook in all of these parts. Thank you, oh. Aunt Ella. Oh. And to my goddaughter, Prairie Ann, she gives you the, the horse award that she won oh, in 1946. It's a major award. Oh, oh, you all know Aunt Ella absolutely cherished this. Ed, Ed, can we wrap this up, please? Right now. Well, and Elmer Plow, we have all of our safety manuals. Now, we've got a lot more in the basement, boxes of these. All of our safety manuals from 1935. God love that woman. Oh, for crying out loud, Plow. Let's go, Ed. Come on. And for Cousin John, we have plat books. All of our plat books. We've got boxes of those also. And our collection of seed corn caps. You'll be the best dressed farmer at the coffee shop. <laughs> seed corn caps. Yeah. What about the farm? Okay, okay. Hey. We'll, get, we'll get, we're going right, that's the next item, the very next item. All right. Okay. Well, it's uh, the house, yeah. the, uh, the farm, farm buildings, uh -huh. yeah. all the machinery, and the farmland I leave to my darling niece, Katie. Katie? Oh, crap. Katie? Oh, no, dear. There's been no change. John is still in a coma. Oh, well, thanks for the offer of help, but there's really nothing anyone can do. Katie? Katie? Katie, I have to go. John! Johnny, can you hear me? Johnny, wake up! John! Well, well, well. Will Minnie's prayers finally be answered? Guess we'll find out after the break. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of One Duck, One Ventriloquist, and Autobiography by Lawyer Ed. Talented, driven, Hungry for fortune and fame, the story of a man and his wooden duck against the world. The High Horse Herald says, This guy quacks me up. What a character, and the lawyer's funny too. The New Pork Periodical says, Best two dollars I ever spent on a book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. Get ready, because just when you thought you'd gotten the cockleburs out of your overalls, they're now on TV. That's right, this is one weed you won't want to pull. The Cockleburr Morning Show with hosts who deliver a mix of news, entertainment, and information about the communities throughout our story country. Now on this station and the web. 
This program has been made possible by The Daily Boar. This sometimes daily newspaper reports the news the residents of Sweet Swine County want to know. Also now featured online at SweetSwineScoop.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows. Now we join Mrs. Swanson as she wrestles with her financial setback. Yes, it's a two-bedroom, two-bath house. Well, um, it's kind of big, and I think that it's time for me to downsize. Well, the open house is in two weeks, but I hope I sell it before then. Thanks for calling. Well, hi, Prairie Ann. Hi, Mrs. Swanson. What you doing? Well, uh, nice to see you. You too. Hey, what's with all these foiled wrapped baked potatoes? That looks interesting. Oh, Prairie Ann. I am catering the Pheasant Hunters Ball this evening. I am up to my armpits in pheasant and, of course, these baked potatoes. Oh. And now I'm making the stuffing squares. Stuffing squares? Mmm, I love those. Could I get your recipe? Well, not today. I'm just too busy. Why are you here? Well, I was at Edie's Cafe this morning. Nosy Norma told me that Clem Johnson told her that you are selling your house. I don't know why I bothered to put it in the paper. All I would have to do is tell Nosy Norma and it would be all over town. Then it's true? Yes, it's true. That Ronnie P. Silage talked me out of all my money and he has besmirched my good name. He besmirched you? Yes, but it's my own fault. That home-spouting dreamer talked me into this hot dish on a stick and I knew it wouldn't fly. So it's really true you are selling? Yes, I certainly am, sister. You want to buy it? Well, yeah. How much do you want for it? Well, I'm asking 75, uh, 78000 Only 78000 Yes, and, and listen, I'll throw in my toaster oven and a pair of my favorite oven mitts. Well, I'll take it. Giddy up. All right. And you know what? I'll contact Lawyer Ed tomorrow. He can get the papers already. Uh, you can take care of the financing, can't you? I won't be needing any financing. I'll be paying cash. But where are you going to live? Well, there's an efficiency apartment behind Sweets and Eats. I really don't need that much room. Where are you going to get $78,000? Let's just say I ran into a little windfall. When can I move in? Don't worry, Ronnie. Ronnie, don't worry. No, no, no. I've spoken with lawyer Ed. I've arranged for your bail. He's going to have you out of jail in no time. No, Ronnie. Yes, I will call your sister Bonnie and tell her that you're innocent. Yeah, just, just relax. It's going to be okay, okay? I'll see you soon, Ronnie. Okay, bye-bye. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. March 5, 1956. I still can't believe it. My annual trip to California was full of surprises this year. I've decided not to tell him. Until I tell who? Sweets and eats. Oh, hi, Mrs. Swanson. Um, it's Katie. Do you have a moment to talk? Well, I'm catering the uh, pheasant hunters ball this evening, and I'm I'm up to my eyeballs in pheasant and and foil wrapped potatoes. Oh my. Uh, well, I'll call back another time. Oh no, no, that's okay. You sound upset. Well, uh, I was reading Aunt Ella's journal. Volume 2, from 1953 to 1956. And? There was a very mysterious entry dated March 5, 1956. <gasps> oh, I love a mystery. It says, get this. It says, I saw the doctor today. I still can't believe it. My annual trip to California was full of surprises this year. I've decided not to tell him. Who? Well, I don't know. It doesn't say. 
And I'm wondering, why did Aunt Della go to California every year? Well, uh, as far as I can remember, Aunt Ella, why, she never spent one or two nights out of the county. Well, well here, here she talks about going to a doctor. Was she sickly? Well, again, as far as I can remember, Aunt Ella never had a sick day in her life. I don't know what that would be about. What, what, what does March 6th say? Well, here's, here's the thing that's very odd. From March 6th all the way through to, let's see, to October 31, 1956, all of the pages have been torn out. Torn out? Torn out, yes. And I'm going to venture a guess that Aunt Ella had a couple of more skeletons in her closet than we know about. Oh, oh, Prairie Ann, thank you so much for agreeing to meet me here. Well, I do admit I was surprised when you called. I know you and Johnny haven't always seen eye to eye on everything. That's an understatement. He fired me. <laughs> I know, but, but please hear me out. You have your own online newspaper, don't you? All right. Well, I need you to do a little undercover work for me. Hmm. Undercover work? Yes. Lawyer Ed told me that Mystic Ray has been in town for a couple of weeks. Mystic Ray? Yes, Mystic Ray. She wants little John back. And with Johnny in a coma, I need to know what she's up to. That's where you come. So, my darling, we meet again. You left me with no other choice, my love. This was so, all so unnecessary, you know. If you would have just listened to me, you would be in the arms of Aunt Minnie again. Oh, now, be a good boy and die, my love. <gasps> He's getting better. Don't worry. Let's go I'll in be and back, check on John. You. What do you think? I will. Do you be really back. want me to go in with you? Hurry, Ann. I cannot let Johnny wake up and find little John gone. He would never, ever forgive me if I let that happen. Oh, Minnie, you must just be beside yourself. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a few phone calls. I'm going to put some feelers out, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, let's do that. And, but, Minnie, where's little John right now? Oh, looks like Cousin John's in for more than just a little pillow talk. Will Aunt Minnie really be able to sleep soundly tonight? And will Prairie Ann get the lowdown on Mystic Ray's whereabouts? We'll have to find out next time on As the Corn Grows! This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of How to Be Jealous of Yourself by Prairie Ann. Born with a total package and surrounded by jealousy her entire life, Prairie Ann shares her personal rise to the top as Sweet Swine's hometown sweetheart. Prairie Ann has thrown off the yoke of pure envy, theirs, not hers, and has put her vast wealth of knowledge in this tell-all book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. Get ready because now you can see a late night talk show filmed in front of a discerning yet agreeable studio audience. Split hoof tonight! Cousin John and his incomparable sidekick, Earl Silo, interview a roster of guests who make appearances that you won't want to miss. Now on this station and the web.